everybody, this is Pablo with Mattress Makers. And I'm Gabe. In this episode of Mattressology, we're gonna talk about, do you need a box spring? So let's go. All right, so a question that we get quite a bit from customers is like, do you need a box spring or should I replace my box spring? That is a common question. Before we get into that, the question is like, what's the purpose of a box spring? Gabe, Yeah. what is the purpose of a box spring? Yeah, I mean, there's really two main purposes that it is gonna provide. One, it's the main one is gonna be support of the mattress. Support. So it needs to support the mattress. Second one is it can add height to the mattress, yes. right? Height to your bed. Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple other ones, but those are the two main purposes of a box spring. And if you want to go a little bit more deeper in a box spring, we actually just shot another video on box springs versus foundations too. That's something that can get a little confusing. So I definitely click on that video because there is a difference. Mm -hmm. So now box springs, uh, they're not as common as they once were. I would say right. about 10, 20 years ago, I would say like 70% of all mattresses so it had a box spring with it. Yeah, you know, it was it was very common. Now, like in our own stores, I was saying I was just doing the numbers. Like less than twenty percent of the mattresses that we sell actually go out with a box spring, or so, foundation, or foundation. Foundation. When I say box spring, I'm also gonna put foundation in there. Box spring and foundation. Watch that other video. It'll make more sense to you. Yeah. So, but yeah, I say about twenty percent is well, actually less than twenty percent. It goes out with a box, with a mattress and a box spring or foundation. Gabe, why is that though? Why are they not as common? Yeah, I mean, mostly now people when they're buying the mattress, they either already have a bed that has a bed with slats on it. Yep. Um, or it's a platform bed. Of course, a lot of times, you know, in our store, they're also buying that adjustable base with it. So they're buying the mattress with the adjustable base that again does not need a box spring or foundation. Yes, which are the adjustable bases out of all the things that go underneath your mattress, that's by far our favorite, which you should definitely consider if you're looking for a whole new sleep system. But yeah, the platform bases, like the Ikea style frames with the slats are a lot more common these days and the adjustable bases. Those are the two biggest reasons yep. why you're not seeing box springs being sold as much. So when do you need a box spring or a foundation? So if you have a standard metal bed frame like this, then yes, you're gonna definitely need a new foundation mm -hmm. or a box spring. Because if you don't have that, if you put the mattress right on top of that, you're gonna fall right through and you're not gonna have any support. Also yeah. though, if now if you have a bed, what's the other reason why you would? Yeah, the other reason would be is if the bed that you have is with slats, but the slats are greater than four inches apart. Yeah, yeah. You know. A lot of the older beds that had this, were, were more designed like this, where you had slats going across, but there are only like three, four, five slats and yeah. they're quite far apart, you know? Then there's nothing to support. You'll fall through just like the bed frame, yeah. you know? And yeah, you're not gonna have any support. So those you definitely, you're gonna need to get a box spring or a foundation on there. So if you have a platform base that looks very similar to this with a good strong center support, and if the slats are very close together, then you should be okay. And when I say slats close together, like on an inner spring, you may be able to get away with like four inches, but like on a foam mattress or on a latex mattress, I would go with like three inches or less. So this one here is looking at about like two and three quarters of an inch. So yeah, if you have a platform base that looks like this, then you do not need to get a box spring or a bed or a foundation that will give you adequate support. Okay, so when should you replace your box spring? Yeah, so the one, when you want to replace your box spring is one, when you get a new mattress, um, especially if it's, uh, you know, with one of the, that, that doesn't have the slats that are less than four inches apart or a solid platform or if it's not adjustable base. Yeah, if you have one of those bed frames that we talked about, then you're gonna need a new box spring. And if you're getting a new mattress, yes, replace it. But why should they replace it? What if, you know, oh man, they fill on, they, they, they mm -hmm. push on it. Oh, it's still in good condition. Because we get that question as, yeah. man, I only had my box spring for five years and it still seems like it's good. Mm -hmm. Why should they replace it? Yeah, I mean, a, a big reason why is because, well, for most manufacturers too, they void the warranty if you don't uh, buy the new, a new box spring or foundation with the mattress. Yeah. Right, so that gets voided. And you kind of think, well, it's kind of silly because they're just trying to add their, you know, more cost to their whole overall purchase. But what happens is if there's ever a warranty issue, they can look at your invoice and say, oh wait, he got the box spring. All right, we can kind of rule that out. Yep. You know, should already have good support. So the warranty is not voided. The warranty. Point, yes. yeah. Yes. So that's so, a big reason why. Yeah, it was, you know, people think, we were touring years yeah. ago. You know, where we were a lot more lenient on people getting a new box spring. We didn't encourage people 
to mm -hmm. or require people to get a new box spring or foundation when they were replacing their mattress, you know, but we learned, we, we actually learned the hard way on this one where like we were seeing these warranty issues come up and like, you know, mattresses started to dip and say like, what's going on with this? You know, the first thing we would check is like what's underneath the mattress and 90% of the, that was there, it was a bad box spring or foundation. Yeah. And even though like around the perimeter, it might have felt tough, but when you started to do a little bit more, more um, checking on it, that it would start, you would feel these little gaps and little voids in their old box spring or foundation. And that was where the issue was. Mm -hmm. So now we're like, okay, you should replace your box spring or your foundation. Yeah. You know, and I mean, for a few hundred dollars, difference if you're gonna you know invest something in the long run for the long term for a few hundred bucks it's worth it to assure that you're getting adequate support for and sure there's no issues with your warranty you know yep. and the fact of the matter too is box rings and they do wear out over time you yeah know? absolutely especially like the cheaper foundations you know where they have the cardboard on them like you'll see them with the, that warping over time yeah we showed that in that other video yep. right yep yeah so i would say I would re definitely recommend doing that. And we've changed, we have had a big change of heart, like I was mentioning, you know, but um, yes, now I'm a huge believer in making sure that bottom of the mattress is supported properly. So another question that often comes up when people are looking to get a new box spring or replacing it is, does the thickness or the height of the box spring or foundation matter? You know, because <laughs> people always assume that if you go smaller, is it gonna compromise your support? So okay, right. what, it doesn't really matter if the standard offerings are about say nine inches, five inches, two inches. Yeah. You know, that's going to be our standard offerings. But does that, do they lose anything? No, you don't lose any. There's no support that's lost. They're built the same way. It's just one's going to be taller, one's going to be a little bit shorter. So there's no wrong, you know, height for you as, unless it's uh, like super high and you just can't really touch the floor. Yeah. Or super low and it's harder for you to get up, right? Typically, what you want is to have, you know, be able to sit on the edge of the bed and your feet firmly planted. Yeah. Yeah, just a personal preference. Yeah. You know, average height, I would say like 26, 27 inches from the floor to the top of the mattress. Yeah. You know, but I've seen people go as high as 32. Some people go really low. Yeah. You know, and it does come down to your personal preference. For sure. Now, like, now also speaking of being really low, like people ask, can I put my mattress on the floor? Yeah. We, it doesn't that... even need anything. Mm hmm. Now, Gabe, what's your take on that one? Yeah, on that one, it's uh, the floor is going to give good support. Yep. Right. But the problem is that it lacks airflow, so you can get that mildew, mold, right? Um, if it's you know could build up underneath the mattress. Yeah, airflow that is something that you should consider, especially if you're getting like a foam mattress. Is you want something that's going to get airflow. That's going to have. I mean, it doesn't have to be super super ventilated, but enough that you get some airflow. Being strictly on the floor, that can you could get condensation buildup yeah. on there, and then you get that mold mildew issue, you know, or like old school like waterbed type frames, or like just plain platform beds with plywood on top of those where there's no airflow too. I've yeah. seen that, especially if you live closer to the coast, mm -hmm. you know. So yes, you can do it. Just remember that you want airflow. You don't want to get too close to the dust too. You know? Yeah, true. I mean, that's you got a lot of dust right down there, but that's again, that's a preference. Getting in and out of bed, that's obvious. If you're, you know, a nice young limber, then you could get up, bounce up, but that's, and it will come down to your personal preference. If you do put it on the floor though, we do have a product that is called Hypervent. So yes, this is, if you have something that you want, you put on like on a, on a just a hard platform or you, on the floor, or if you just need a little bit of ventilation, this is a great option. Yeah. You just put the mattress right on top of this. This is like this very super hard plastic material, goes right on top of it. It allows that airflow. We sell, we do a lot of like custom boat mm -hmm. mattresses where there's a lot of condensation. And this is probably the most affordable, most effective option. There's other types of options that you could use, but this one, it only raises about three quarters of an inch. You get airflow, it's not super expensive and it does the job. Yep. So I definitely would recommend you do that if you have any condensation issues or airflow issues, hypervent. So I hope that answered the question that the world has been asking, do you need a new box spring? So if it helped you, it would be great if you could just subscribe to our channel, give us a like, you know, post a comment or any questions and hopefully we can get back to you. Yeah, and also if you're on your mattress shopping journey, we created this mattress shopping guide that um, this helps you on your mattress shopping journey. 
questions like this, you know, we answer in there. You know, it just gives you just where to go when you're, you know, shopping for your mattress. Yeah, and the, the next video I would watch is the box screens versus foundations video. That's a really good video. And then also we have a video series, like we pick apart these mattresses. We just did a purple mattress. It was yeah. pretty interesting, you know? So yes, I hope this helped you guys. Thanks for watching. Sleep well, God bless.